There is no better mousetrap when it comes to retirement planning. There just isn't, my friends. There is no silver bullet that you or that you can grab onto to protect against all everything. There isn't. I, I can't. I get all these emails like, "Should I do this? Should I do that? What do you think?" I'm like, "Look, I, you know, it's, when I did my video the other day on fixed index annuities, a lot of people are like, well, do you think?'" I'm like, "Look, I'm not going to do one. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? And, and the reason I'm not is I hate having my money locked up. I hate it. Now, I'll share with you what I will do once I hit retirement. But you know, I, I had my money locked up in my 401k, so it cost me uh, thirteen thousand dollars in penalties." to take a $100,000 distribution out, of which I had to pay income taxes too. So I had to take 130,000 out to pay the income taxes and to pay the penalty. So it cost you 13,000 bucks because it was under the age of 59 and a half. That's what happens with fixed index annuities too. And I just, I don't want my money locked up, which is why I'm no longer doing deferred retirement accounts. I'm doing everything in brokerage accounts. So I have access to it. I hate having my money locked up. Now I get it. There are ways you can have access to a little bit of your fixing any kind of annuity they'll usually give you a 10 percent uh, dis, uh distribution without penalty um but that's not enough or you can turn into a spia a single premium income annuity without penalty but no i don't want i don't want my money tied up i don't it's, it's bad um and so a lot of people say well what about this fund or i had a guy email me what about this and i'm just look so let me show i look there is no better mousetrap there isn't the the sure assurest assures the certain way I don't know that's the right word is to have your house paid off because think about it like this just come the stock market isn't going bankrupt for heaven's sake BlackRock and the vanguards of the world these are the world elite they got too much money tied into it they're not going to watch the stock market go to zero so we know it's not going I mean look anything could happen I grant you but buy it for heaven's sake man. The stock market isn't going to zero. It's just not going to happen. On top of that, we also know there's a upper limit to the interest rates that can happen with bonds because we know the interest rates are so low by design because the federal government debt is so big that if interest rates go up to a normal 55 to 6% 10-year treasury, it's going to break the, the government. They don't have the money to pay the interest. I know we own our own debt. At the end of the day, though, they still got it's still a balance sheet. They still got to take from here to there in terms of interest payments. It's just it can't. I mean, I guess they can do anything, but so we know the interest rates. There's a there's an upper limit to what the interest rates are going to do. So the stock market we know is not going to zero. And again, anything can happen. I could be wrong. I don't know, but I, it's hard to imagine the stock market going to zero. And it's hard to imagine the interest rates going up to what they were in the 70s. But remember, interest rates increasing are proportional to where they are today. I'm going to dive in that here in just a second. So point being is I don't want to lock up my money. I don't believe the stock market is going to zero. So I still want to be invested in stocks. And I still and I don't think the interest rate uh, dilemma of higher interest rates is going to kill bonds. I don't. And we have evidence of that part, you know, in terms of interest rates increasing. So we're just going to look at the Wellesley. And I've just put $100,000 in Wellesley. We don't have enough time for the Wellesley, unfortunately, to see how it only goes back to 1970. So in the first year I got here is 1972. But that's a good place to start because that's when the interest rates started increasing. We had the 73, 74 bear market and whatnot. So the 70s are really when you want to start. Yes, yes, yes. 1966 was the beginning. From 66 to 82 was the worst time to retire, 100%. Um, and you don't, there, and the, Wellesley doesn't go back that far. Wellington does. And we'll talk about Wellington as well. So anyway, um, in fact, if you haven't uh, read my book on retire on Wellington, um, you should find it right here. And, uh, I talk about what happened in Wellington from 66 to 82 retire with Wellington. Fund. I would do retire with Wells, Wellesley too. Just don't have enough time for that fund. But as long as you have the 70s, it makes me happy. So anyways, here's the Wellesley. We got 100,000 bucks in there. We're taking 5,000 a year adjusted for inflation. All right. Um, yeah, right there. So we're adjusted for inflation. Make sure that looks good. Okay. Okay. So what you'll see here is you'll see the inflation rates. Inflation doubled from 72 to 73. All right. So I imagine the interest rates right here. The interest rates doubled from 72 to 73. Yeah, not quite, but pretty doggone close. So the interest rates doubled with inflation and the Wellington fund fell 3.5%. Wow. The next year, inflation almost doubled again from 72 to 74. I mean, from 73 to 74, inflation went from 6.2 to 11. Interest rates went from 3.8 to 6.9 to 8. And Wellington was down 6.4%. Wow. Huge, huge declines. Huge declines there. 
I mean, it, between that's not even that's ten nine point nine percent combined drop. So now you're sitting on eighty three thousand dollars. You had a hundred thousand bucks in there. You're sitting on eighty three thousand bucks after you're taking adjusted for inflation. You took out uh, six thousand the second year. So we start with five thousand because inflation. We had to take twenty uh, percent more. The third year, look at that. So we start with five thousand. We're withdrawing. We took fifty-one, sixty-one, fifty-four, eighty-one, six thousand, eighty-seven, and we're sitting on eighty-three thousand dollars. Again, this is pretty much the worst time you could have had. All right, so we're gonna go back, and then the following year, inflation was still high. It went from eleven, but it did drop to nine point one. And yet, look at Wellington; it went up by seventeen and a half percent, and the interest rates fell. Huh? Interest rates fell. Oh, watch this. Inflation goes from 9.1 to 5.8. Interest rates fall. Inflation goes up to 6.5. Inflation, inflation stays flat. Uh, inter, inflation goes from 6.5 to 7.6. Interest rates go from 5.1 to 7.2. And Wellington is still putting out positive returns. Remember, this is the years, too, where the P.E. ratios and stocks was low, dudes. Now, you were getting high dividends, I grant you, but you know, the dividends even then weren't huge. I mean, I mean, there weren't like 10% or anything like that. I mean, still, it was like the average dividend is about 4% historically. So, I mean, look at that. So, it's not like you're getting huge capital appreciation plus huge dividends. I mean, you just weren't. The 70s was a bad year to invest. All right, so look at that. So, now we got Wellington down three point or up 3.6. So, now we're sitting on 94000 bucks, And by now, we're taking 8000 a year out from 1972 to 1978. We've increased our withdrawal amounts from five thousand to eight thousand bucks. Crazy, and interest rates. So let's just look at this. So interest rates went here from five point one to seven point two, which is uh, two point one divided by five point one. That's a forty one percent increase in interest rates. Interest rates right here went from three point eight, based on hundred percent increase in interest rates. Uh, I'm going to share with you why that's important. So then we got here. Uh, we got inflation kicking in, going to 11.4. Interest rates go from seven point, go up 30 percent from seven, well, more than 30 percent from 7.2 to 10.4. And yet Wellington's clocked a 6.2 percent return. Seven, in 1980, inflation goes from 11.4 to 13, and, and interest rates go from 10.4 to 11.2. 1981, interest rates go to 14.7. Wellington, uh, Wellesley is still clocking in positive returns. So after uh, uh, 12 years or 11, 10 years, something like that, we're sitting on $85,000, even though we're taking $11,000 a year out of the portfolio. I mean, you're going to run out of money, I think, yeah, right here. You ran out of money in 1996. 1996. From 1972 to 1996, you ran out of money. And again, you're 24 years into retirement. What's the likelihood you're going to last 24 years? Not very high. And that's Wellesley Fund. I mean, look at that. You had one down here in 87, and you had two down years in 73 and 74. Is there a better mousetrap that fixed index annuities are going to solve that? I don't think so. Can you make an argument that the interest rates are so low now you're not getting the same yield? But yeah, you could. But then again, you also got to make the argument the interest rates went up 300% here, or 100%, but three three times. Now I can show you what that means there. Again, look at this 5.1 to 7.2 to 10.4 to 11.4. To, to 14.7, they doubled from, they went up 700 basis points from 1978 to 1981. Again, I share with me, I'm going to show you what that means. Were stocks kicking butts and taking names? No, we know from 70, basically the 70s were a horrible year for stocks. Inflation was kicking butt and taking names, was taking freaking, was was taking no prisoners. And yet the, well, the Wells Lee did just fine, did just fine. Now the issue again is if you have a lot of debt, here's the issue. The way I look at it, if your house is paid off, all right, yes, you got property tax, I grant you. Yes, you got homeowner's insurance, I grant you. If your house is paid off and all your debts are paid off, you can always revert back to eating beans and rice if you need. Or you can just get a part-time job if they're available. And I think they're going to be available in mass because a lot of baby boomers are, I hate to say it, but dying off. And there's not a young, enough young people coming in behind them to uh, work part-time gigs, all right? So if you're, I mean, just long story short is, let's just put it this way. If you have no debt, you can freaking tighten your belt a hell of a lot better than someone who does. I cannot stress this enough. All right, so let's take a look at Wellesley. Hold on a second. On the Vanguard website, we're going to look up Wellesley Income Fund. 
Uh, you're paying 23 basis points. You just you can't beat that, man. Conservative allocation, and we're going to look at the uh, the risk potential. Right now, you're getting 2.03 in the SEC yield. All right, and we're going to go down to characteristics, and I'm looking for duration. All right. So the duration is 8.1 years. 8.1 years. All right. So what does that mean? That means for every 100, 1% uh, uh, increase in interest rates or 100 basis points increase, 1% interest rate increase, the, the Wellesley Fund would go down by 8.1%. You can qualify that or quantify that. You can quantify it. So for every increase in interest rates by one full percent, the Wellesley Fund would go down by 8.1%. All right. So now let's look at uh, where was the bucket right there. So here's the bucket. So here we were, and Wellesley was up by what? The interest rates were up by 300 basis points. So 3%, all right? And the Wellesley went down by 3.5, 3.5. That's it. But yet, Josh, you said if the Wellesley goes, if the interest rates go up by 1%, the portfolio will drop by 8.1. This is only on the bond side of it. All right, so if you take your trusty whiteboard, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Wellesley is 40% bonds, 60% stocks. So we take 0.4 and we times that by, uh, well, we're going to do, so 40% of the portfolio, the bonds would drop by 80, by 8%. Hope that makes sense. All right, so we times that by uh, 0 0.08 and we're going to say that's how much it would drop, 0 0.4, oops. 0.4 times 0.08, it would drop by 3.2% for every 100% increase in interest rates, or one full percent is going to drop by 3.2%. That's it. If you look at, if it goes down by, so that way we know, if we go back to the bucket where it goes up by 300 basis points, your Wellesley is going to go down by times three was that 9.6 percent just again on the bond side it's going to go down by all 9.6 i hate to say it that's just that's just big fat nothing burger man 9.6 no big deal and that's what the interest rates go up by 300 basis points i want to show you something from 1972 to 1973 it went up by 300 basis points all right, now I want you to understand this. It went, this is the the, uh, the treasury bills. So listen to me, this is huge. 300 basis points. What was that? That's just a doubling of the interest rates. It went from 3.8 to 6.9, three full percentage points, a doubling of the interest rates, that's it. So if you look at, let's go to, uh, let me pause it real quick. Here's the US Department of Treasury daily yield curve. If we look at right now, the the one month bond treasury treasury bill is three basis points. Go back to here. It was one month treasury bill three point eight percent three hundred eighty basis points is was playing paying back then. Now it's three. So for this to go from point zero three up three hundred basis points, I don't even know what kind of increase that would be. It's like infantile or infantile infinite. I, it literally. For this to go up by 300 basis points, three full percentage, that in the history of mankind has never happened. It'll never do that. Why? Because it would kill everything. People, I mean, so your bonds back in 1972 were at 3.8. Your bonds now are at 0.03. The bonds in 1972 could go up 100% or doubling in order to increase the the fight against inflation, which is stupid. But still, at the end of the day, that's what they did. For the bonds to go up a full percentage point, 100 basis points, would not be a doubling of the interest rates, would not be a tripling. It'd be, I can't even calculate how high of an increase that would be. Now, could it happen? Anything could happen. They're raising the federal funds rate by 25 basis points four times over the next year, which is just stupid, but that's what they're saying. Now increase interest rates by a full 100 basis points or one full percent. And then your Wellesley will go down 3.8. But do you think they're going to do that 300 basis points? Are you crazy?
It's not, I mean, look, anything can happen. And that's the whole point about this. Anything could happen, which is why you want your, in my opinion, for me, now you could be different. You might have some liquidity that you can tap into and still do a fixed index annuity. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not, I, I'm not doing it because I want all my money liquid, man. I don't want to tie up anything. I've been through that. I don't want to do it again. I've been through that in 2008. Been through that in 2002. I don't want to, or 2000, 2001 or two. I don't want to do that again. Been through that in 2017 when I needed the money to start this business. I'm not doing that again. And as such, I'm saying the best mousetrap for old Josh is, in this case, can be cash and Wellington fund and have no debt. Cash, Wellington fund, no debt. You might be a little bit more conservative. Cash, Wellesley fund and no debt. I'm okay with it. Or bit Wellington and Wellesley. I don't care. Where I'm just going with this is at the end of the day, it's like, look, if you don't have any debt, you can tighten your belt pretty good. You can tighten your belt real good, as a matter of fact, because you're like, I don't really have to, I don't have to go on that vacation. I don't have to buy the fillets. I can just eat freaking, you know, vegetables I raised in my backyard and find a local farmer I can buy some meat from. You know, it's not going to be cheap, but I don't really, have, I don't need to buy new clothes. I don't need a new car. I don't need to take a trip if things get that bad. Pretty common sense. No debt, cash, Wellesley, no debt, cash, Wellington, combination thereof. Just keep it simple. There is no better mousetrap. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.